Hello, today's topic is about risk design and causation. That is chapter six. Identifying causes, figuring out why things happen, is the goal of most social science research. To determine which possibility could contribute to the causes of something, we must design our research designs carefully. There are two key elements of research design: the design's units of analysis and its use of cross-sectional or longitudinal data. Whenever we design research, we must decide whether to use individuals or groups as our units of analysis, and whether to collect data at one or several points in time. Conclusions about processes at the individual level should be based on individual level data. Conclusions about group level processes should be based on data collected about groups. A researcher who draws conclusions about individuals level processes from group level data could be make could be making what is termed as ecological fallacy. On the other hand, when data about individuals are used to make inferences about group level processes, a problem occurs that can be thought as a mirror image of ecological fallacy, the reductionist fallacy, also known as reductionism or individualistic、uh, individual individualist fallacy. This figure shows that if we、uh, collect data used in Different way we may get into those fallacies. For example, if you look at the data is a group data, and apply in group, we are doing good. For example, more homogeneous groups tend to have stronger social bonds. So group data for the group、uh, conclusions. So that's excellent. But if we are group data, we apply into individual level, then we are. Uh, violating this into ecological fallacy. For example, group with a higher average age are more conservative, so older people are more conservative. So clearly, we are not doing right in this kind of causal conclusion. Similarly, if we do individual data, we have individual data. We apply into groups like students who socialize. The More have lower grades, so schools with more social engagement will have poor students in、uh, performance. So here we have this called reductionist fallacy. But if we use individual data for individuals, older people tend to be more conservative. We are doing good. So clearly we need to be aware and in what situation we use what type of data. In research design, we also talk about、uh, there are two type of research, and one is called cross-sectional research design. All data are collected at one point in time. For example, if we want to、uh, pass the questionnaire to our Pacific students now, collect data and today, and we call that is a cross-sectional research design, or or another word, a cross-sectional、uh, study. But if we collect data in multiple points of time, so we call that is a longitudinal research design. So that is a two different type of designs. Here is an example for longitudinal design.、Uh, if we have a time one, and say 1960s, and then compare with 19, let's say 80s. The two time period to see how people's value fashion changes over time. So this is called trend study. Secondly, if we do a panel, so we collect these people, we do not change people, and uh, say uh, uh, the two thousand and follow these、uh, people over a period of time and today. To see what is the, what's these people's value changes, ideal changes, attitude change. Remember, we do not change anybody. It's a fixed sample, so that is called panel study, another type of、uh, longitudinal study. Third one is called cohort study. We follow people from one cohort 
for example, and 2004 students follow these cohort over a period of time, or maybe baby boomers. So these are uh, three type of longitudinal design. Most of social scientists seek uh, causal uh, explanations that reflect tests of the type of hypothesis with which uh, you are familiar. The independent variable is the presumed cause and the dependent variable is the potential effect. In order to develop this uh, causal uh, relation, determine the causal relationship, we are using three criteria to determine the causal relationship. So number one is the association or relationship. Number two is the time order. Number three is to eliminate third variables. So let's uh, kind of elaborate one by one. Let's say if we say x cos y. So s is independent variable and y is a dependent variable. Let's see x is a TV viewing and dependent variable is a political knowledge. That means the more we watch TV, the more political knowledge we develop. If we want to determine this a causal relationship, number one, we are saying that this independent variable and, and a dependent variable should have some relationship. For example, the more you watch TV, the more knowledge you develop. So this is called positive relationship. There's also another possibility. The more you watch TV, the less political knowledge you have. So either way, it can work. So that means there's some kind of relationship. Number two is time order. So that means the independent variable must take place first. And the dependent variable should take place second. So that is a time order. So that's why we can say the independent variable cause dependent variable. So that is time order. Third one is elimination of third variables. So what, what we are saying is that we want to eliminate all other variables like education, like income, like uh, occupation, like a job, for example. All those variables should be eliminated. So if we can do that, then we can say is x causes y. And those are the three criteria for causal explanations. And that's the end of uh, today's uh, presentation. Thanks.